if you guys can turn with me to Psalms chapter one, we're going to start from Psalms chapter one, verse one through uh, three. Um, I'll just read the two um, verses of script or two scriptures we're going to go to, and then we'll begin, okay? Uh, Psalms chapter one, verses one through three says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. For he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit and his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do, doeth shall prosper. We're also going to go to Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs chapter 18, starting from verse 20. Um, it says, we're going to do verse 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth, and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. All right. So we read from Psalms chapter one, verses one through three. We also read Proverbs chapter 20, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 18, verse uh, 20 and 21. And uh, what we want to discuss tonight as on your screen is uh, the fruit of the word of God, the fruit of the word of God. And um, as we have been uh, with you guys listening to, uh, Sunday morning services and also um, your Bible studies um, and how this year has been a year of uh, has been deemed for the year of fruitfulness and uh, even talking about relationships uh, this month and uh, in January talking about fruitfulness uh, what we want to be mindful of is of what how we're speaking in these in this season of fruitfulness um, the words that we're using and in the this season of fruitfulness as most of you uh, may understand um your words have power your words um your words uh, are able to either help or hurt right um the bible talks about um uh the word being a seed right and luke chapter 8 verse 11 it says the word of god is a seed right and, but also your words are also seed also. What you speak is a seed and it gets planted into the hearts and minds of those you talk to. And it also it gets planted in your own heart and mind, mm -hmm. right? So your words are our seed. And if we're not careful, our words can either plant something harmful or plant something that is uh, uh, edifying something that is palatable, something that is nourishing to ourselves and other people. So we, we got in the scripture in uh, Psalms chapter one, where it says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the un ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Now it says blessed, which means it's not somebody, it's, it's not, um, the, the word blessed in this sense means somebody who's happy or joyful or delighted. Those who are, who are delighted do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, the Bible says, right? Uh, it says it doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. That means where I get my counsel from, where I get my advice from, where I get um, uh, uh, my instructions from doesn't come out of uh, somebody who does not believe in God or somebody who, who is uh, ungodly, right? Especially for life situations. It's a different thing if you're talking about the job and somebody's trying to train you on the job, how to do the job. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about living as a disciple of Jesus Christ, living a holy life before God. We don't allow ungodly people to dictate or to counsel us on how to live, right? It says, uh, uh, the one that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. What we have to understand, the word walk uh, uh, is indicative of coming into agreement, right? The word of God says in Amos chapter three, verse three, uh, how can two walk together except they be agreed? 
right? So if you're walking with somebody, that means you're agreeing with them. So we don't walk or agree. We don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. We don't agree to that kind of counsel. It says, nor standeth in the way of sinners, right? Standing and uh, in the way of sinners really gives a, a connotation of somebody that is now becoming coming into a lifestyle, it's evolving. The way of sinners is the way of life. They're how they journey, how they go through life, right? It's a lifestyle. So you're standing in the way of sinners, the Bible says, uh, or nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, those who mock. The Bible says, be not deceived. God is not mock. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. So if you are uh, a sitting in the seat of the scornful, or that word also means mocker. That means somebody who does not uh, uh, who does not respect God or who believes there is no God. The Bible says that the fool have said in his heart that there is no God, right? But if whatever you're sowing, whatever you whatever you're believing, whatever you're believing in, and whatever you're sowing is what you're going to uh, 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 whatever you're sowing in to do is what you're going to reap. And I just want to give you. One more thing before I give it over to Shell. Look at the progression of what the psalmist is saying. Blessed is the man who does not walk, stand, and sit. You started walking, then you stood, then you sat. Right? Once you get to a destination, you usually sit, right? You start walking there. Once you get there, you might stand and look around. And then after a while, as you sit, it's like you're finally there. And sometimes what ends up happening is you settle down into, into these uh, uh, ideologies. You settle into, um, well, like me and Shell was talking about how the world says seeing is believing. But God says, if you believe, you will see. See, the world gives you it backwards. The world thinks if you see it, then you can believe it. But God says, if you believe it, you will see it. But if you keep going along with what the world is giving out or what the world is talking about, then you'll be twisted in your understanding of being fruitful uh, by your words and by what you believe. So it's always you always got to check your source. That's what it's coming down to. Checking the source of where you're getting your information. Is this from God or is this from man or is this from the devil? If it's not from God, it won't stand. If it's not from God, you won't produce the fruit that you're looking for that goes, uh, uh, ever, that fruit that will last for eternity, right? The fruit that we get from God, the fruit that the word produces lasts for eternity. And not only that, not only would it bless us, but people will be able to come to us. And that same fruit that blessed us, we can give to them. Shell, you want to add to that? Um, no, not really. Um, you go, you're doing good so far. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we'll go to verse uh, two. It says, okay, so verse one says, blessed is the man who walks not. So this is what you shouldn't do, but this is what now verse two is telling what you should do. Okay, my my source of counsel, my source of, 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 of life or the way I uh, conduct my life, my lifestyle, and also where I, where I dwell, where I reside should not be with the wicked, should not be with the sinner should not be for those who mock God, right? But it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. So the person who's blessed, they're blessed by meditating on the word of God. They're blessed by uh, um, uh, bringing, getting delight from the word. I'm not just being a hearer of the word, but I'm actually doing the word. But he says he meditates on the law day and night. Now, in the new age, meditation is kind of uh, used to uh, come to know oneself or to get to know oneself through meditation. But this is not what the Bible wants us to meditate on. It's not to getting to know us. It's getting to know God, right? We get to know us through God. We don't get to know us just by on our own or going through ourselves. We get to know God by meditating on his word. If anybody wants to know what God sounds like, the first resource you go to is the word of God. It's not a prophet. It's not your pastor. It, now, these are sources, right? But the main source 
is the word of God. Because anything your pastor will say to you, anything a prophet will say to you, anything a sister or brother in Christ will say to you, always must revert back to the word of God. There's nothing that we can say that's uh, um, that will make it that will make you fruitful if it's outside of the word of God. Shell, you want to say something? Yeah. So I wanted to go into, if it's okay, go to verse number three, so I can tie in another scripture. Um, uh, he shall be tr he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall not off, shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. So this scripture freight this these three uh, scriptures tie very much to joshua's one, joshua one and eight that talks about this book of the law shut out the part out of thy mouth thou shalt meditate there in day and night thou shalt make that thou mayest observe to do all that mayest do all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and then thou shalt have good success so our our talk about fruitfulness is tying into your success. Our talk about fruitfulness is tying into your uh, prosperity. Our talk about fruitfulness is tying into your deliverance. And all of the source goes really back to the word of God. It goes back to the word of God, like um, Kevin is saying. If you don't make the word of God your source, you will be lost. Right. Um. Uh, uh, that is exactly true. Uh, what she's saying is the word of God must be the first and final authority in your life. If the word of God is not the resource you go to, any other source outside of the word of God or, or any other source that does not bring you back to the word of God will lead you down a path that is not fruitful. Right? Again, like I said, every, uh, your pastor... Uh, another man of God or woman of God, uh, um, your brothers and sisters, everything that they say should be corroborated by the word of God. As a matter of fact, the word, they don't corroborate, the, the word doesn't corroborate their words. They corroborate the word of God, right? Because the word doesn't back us up. We, or the, the, the word is not what we're backing up. The word is actually in front of us. We, we, we follow after the word. Right. So our word should never be something that contradicts the word of God. It should be something that's in line with the word of God. How I live my life, my ethics, my 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 life ethics, my uh, morality, uh, my character, my actions, uh, uh, my conduct is all things that I get from the word of God. Who I am. I know who I am by the word of God. I can't. I can't know myself apart from the word of God because his word tells me exactly who I am. Now, of course, there'll be some, um, there'll be some things that, uh, uh, that are detailed to your life that may not be uh, 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 word for word described in the word, but the principle of it will be back in the word. If somebody says that you're going to be a successful business person, even though that word is specific to you, you could still bring that the root of that word back to the source, which is the Bible. There should be nothing that you can't go back to the Bible and say, is this true? Right. Also, one thing we want to bring up is that word meditate. Right. Uh, it says that he uh, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law, does he meditate day and night? Meditation is, like I was saying, is something um, that the New Age have done, uh, uh, have made to seem more um, spooky, or something to uh, to mean uh, like you're finding yourself through meditation, like getting really quiet, and you know, getting really silent so that you can get to know yourself. Well, in the Bible, that's not what meditation is. As a matter of fact, that word means to mutter, to mutter the words, like to keep almost like repeating the words. And, and thinking them over and over, right? But there is a difference between meditation and ruminating, right? Meditation is when you're thinking on the word of God and allowing God's spirit to help you think that word through. That as you begin to think on the word of God, when the word, like we were uh, discussing, me and Shell were discussing, when the word of God says, I'm the head and not the tail, I'm above and not beneath. Well, as you begin to meditate on that word, 
the, the Lord will begin to show you how that word fits in your life. How, what that word means right now in your life, what that, when you begin to meditate on the word of God, it begins to give you understanding of what he wants to do in your personal life, right? Because the word of God is for all people. It's not for black people. It's not just for white people. It's not for uh, uh, different kinds of people. It's for all people. Everybody can get it. It's a general word to everyone. Right. And so everybody should be able to look into the word of God, see themselves, know who they are and be able to go back and do what the word says. Do James says like this. Somebody get James chapter one. James chapter one. And I believe it's verse tw starts from twenty two. Anybody have James chapter one, verse 22? Any version will do. I got it. Okay, you're gonna read from 22 to 25. Okay, James chapter one, verse 22. And I'm reading the NIV version. Um, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive uh, yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says, like someone who looks at is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at him at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they had they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Okay, thank you so much. So that, that word that was read, right, out of James chapter 1, 22, it says not to be just a hearer of the word. See, a lot of what happens in Christianity or a lot of what happens with believers is we only hear the word, but we don't actually put the word to action. And sometimes the reason why we don't put the word to action is because we don't understand how to use it, right? We don't understand how to skillfully use the word. So we say the word, like me and Shel was uh, having a conversation. We we're talking about sometimes we confess the word without understanding it. Now you can continually confess the word and eventually understand it will happen. But what you want to do is not only do you want to confess the word, but you want to understand what you're confessing, right? And that's why James said, it, don't just be hearers of the word, but be doers. Put the word to action. Because he says, anybody who is just a hearer, is like a man who goes to the mirror, looks in the mirror, sees his face, but then when he walks away, he forgets what he looks like. Now, that's just weird to me. I've been looking at my face for 44 years. If I begin to look at my face and walk away for a few minutes and forget what I look like, something's off with me, right? But it says, but those who not only hear the word, but do it, they not only they continue in the word. And that's the difference is I'm constantly looking at the word to see who to, to, to see the image of who I am, who I'm supposed to look like, right? That the, the word of God is showing God in me, right? The word of God is showing me, okay, I need to fix this on in this part of my heart. I need to fix this in this part of my heart, or I need to straighten up in this area, or I'm doing better in this area. The word of God will show you, you, and it will also show Christ in you. But the difference is, is are, am I looking to the word intently? And am I looking into in the word continually? It says that he will continue in the word of God. He said, but whosoever looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, he, he will not be a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds right? He shall be blessed. That's why the Bible, that's why we read in Psalms chapter one, blessed is the man or blessed is the woman. It's really not a, a gender thing. It's, it's a person, it's just a, any person. It's gender neutral. Blessed is the person who doesn't, who doesn't walk in the counsel of the ungodly or stand in the way of sinners or sit in the seat of the scornful, but they delight in the word of God. And in that word, they meditate day and night. So one of the ways that we 
um, use the word as a source is to meditate. You know, that's one of the ways that like we were just talking about. And the other one is confession. So one of the things that we all know, so we read it in Proverbs 18 about death and life being in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. So confession in the Bible is not about necessarily um, what you desire. Confessing is saying what, what God has already said about you. You repeat what God says you are. So there's this scripture in um, Philemon um, chapter one. I'm not going to let nobody ask nobody to go find it because it's, it's only one chapter in the Bible, in the New Testament. But I'll read it real quick. It's Philemon one and six. It says, I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective and powerful because you, because of your accurate knowledge of every good thing which is ours in Christ. Every good thing that is ours in Christ. So the, pur the purpose of me reading the scripture is we have good things in us that are from Christ. We have to identify with those things and those things we confess. So some of us struggle with uh, things in our lives, uh, whether it be sickness or poverty or um, anger or whatever the case may be. And one of the things that hinders our fruitfulness is how we talk about those things. One of the things that Jesus did when he would pray, he would pray what he wanted, not what he saw. He would pray what he wanted, what, not what he saw. So he prayed as if it already was his, not looking at what he was looking at and professing that. So my question to us is when we're praying, are we talking about what we see? Are we talking about our problems, right? Are we confessing the negative part of what we don't want? Or all I see is bills. All I see is that I don't have enough money. My kids are getting on my nerves. Are we confessing the things that we really don't want, but we're talking about it? Or are we speaking in faith, which includes speaking life? Speaking faith is speaking life which leads to fruitfulness because you can't have fruitfulness without life, okay? When you speak life, you're going to speak the very opposite of what you're seeing. Why? Because I'm believing that the God that's in me, that gave me all the good things that's in me, he's going to speak the fruitfulness out of me what he's put in me. And you have to speak that. You, it can't be um, your pastor, your pastor can to say it, your sister can encourage you, but until it hits, infiltrate your heart, like it says in Romans 10 and 10, but, uh, let me just read it so I can see it, say it right. For with heart, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. You have to believe from the heart and confess with your mouth unto your salvation and salvation is not just, um, being delivered from sin. Salvation is a whole package and it's too long to talk about right now. There is so much included in your salvation package. So when you realize what's in your salvation package by looking to the word of God, you confess that because it belongs to you. Not only does it belong to you, it belongs to your children. If generational curses can pass, so can generational blessings. I can speak generational blessings over my children because of the promises that God has given me. It's aligned with the promise. So I speak the promise. If I don't see the promise in my life, I'm going to speak it until it manifests in my life by God's power. Not by, my, not, not by what I'm saying. I'm putting faith in the God who gave me the words to say. Not just me uh, speaking the words just to speak them like it's a formula. Right. But the thing about it is, is Confession is not formulas. It's actually words of faith. Right. When you, when you speak words of faith, you have, to, um, you have to believe what you're saying is going to actually happen, right? The Bible says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. You have to believe what you're saying is going to happen or you have to believe what God is saying about you right 
but the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You have to believe that. Saying it is one thing, believing it's another thing. How many under how many know that we've said a lot of things that we didn't believe, but we just said them anyway, whether it was spiritual or not, whether it was just like, yeah, I'm gonna finish reading this book. We said it, but we didn't really believe it. Yeah, I'm gonna finish uh cleaning out my uh closet this week. We said it, but we really didn't believe it. And didn't do it. <laughs> right. If you didn't believe it, you're definitely not, not gonna, gonna do, do it. it. Right. Right. But when you believe that that see, that's the difference, is right. Uh, I was sharing this with Shell. Belief, when you believe in your heart, that is to acknowledge or it's a mental assent of what God is saying, right? So mental assent meaning is I acknowledge that what God said is right, is true, is just, and all of those things, right? But faith takes what we believe and actually puts it into action. Faith actually goes beyond just saying, God, you're all right. It's a, not only are you a right, but I'm going to act upon what you said, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about that uh, by faith, Noah moved with fear in building the ark. The Lord told Noah to build an ark. Now he could have believed God, but if he never did what God says, his faith was not, was not alive. It was not active, right? But belief has to go beyond just what I, what I, what I believe God to be true, but it has to go into the realm of faith now, where now I'm acting on what I believe. All right, I believe this. Right, uh, um, uh, uh, I believe it's Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eighteen. I believe it says, "I believe, therefore have I spoken." I believe, and the action that corresponds with my belief is I speak. Right, I believe. Therefore, I have spoken, right? And this is the thing about it is, is we, we read this scripture um, earlier uh, at the beginning of Proverbs chapter 18. Go to back to Proverbs chapter 18. And we were around verse 20, right? It says, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips, shall he be filled, right? A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So think about that. Your mouth produces fruit. Yes. It can be good fruit or it can be bad fruit. James says, how can uh, you say something, bless and curse come out the same mouth, Right? How can sweet water and bitter water come out the same spigot? How can a tree produce figs and produce, uh, let's say, grapefruit? It can't. It's not supposed to. If a, if a tree is producing two different kinds of fruit, there's a mutation somewhere. Right? It's, this is the reason why the, uh, the snake has a forked tongue because it could speak two different things at the same time, right? You have to be able to control your tongue on what you say. Especially, I wanna say this to the parents, especially over what you say to, over your kids. Amen, amen. You calling your kids no good, you just like your daddy or, or, or you can't even do nothing right. Well, they won't because you just confessed that over them. What you just did was put a word curse over your child. You told them they couldn't do it. Their heart believes it now. It's over their life, and now they won't. They're eating the fruit of your mouth. Every time you tell your child something negative that they can't do or they won't ever be, they're eating that fruit. They're ingesting that fruit and digesting that fruit. So as we go into um, the breakouts, um, there are two questions that we have um, regarding this, um, this teaching. We hope that it was clear enough and, un and understood. Um, the first question is, do, do you look to the word of God as the source for your life decisions, beliefs, code of conduct, and inspiration? 
Do you look to the word of God as the source of your life decisions, beliefs, code of conduct, and inspiration? Okay. The second one, how's your word diet? How is your word diet? Are you speaking negatively? Are you allowing people around you to speak negatively? Okay. And then the lastly, how can we pray for you? All right. Um, we hope that this part of the teaching has been helpful. Of course, we'll have, you know, time afterwards if there's questions, but um, we want you to be mindful of your words and, and making sure that you're allowing the word of God to be the source of what you look to. Um, do we have